welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are going to paint some dire trolls. We are. We have the dire trolls from the wonderful. Right. Uh, uh, this one's got another one in it. Check it out. So I think we're actually giving this one away tonight. I think we are. Super cool. Confirmation from Leona, just off screen. Breaking news. We are. <laughs> now, now, I know that we're. Normally, it's, yeah, I think it's a little bit odd, but we're back in the studio. We are. We're back in the Woo! studio. Yeah! Yes, Leona and Johnny on. Yeah, in the it. background. So, <laughs> so we're back in the studio. We're back in the new location. Uh, we are back with uh, some lovely red backdrops. <laughs> well, I can almost touch it. But, um, yes. Yeah. It's so this will, this will evolve over time. Back better than ever. Right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. We were talking about it, but just like a like the red version of a green screen, I can't wear any of my red shirts anymore. Oh, that's true. I can actually wear green now though. This is true. Fun. Nice. <laughs> now I'm just gonna find everything red in my closet. That's what that is. <laughs> I just wear that. Chris, that would uh, be good. Nice. It's very red. It is. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So oh we can say hi to Chris, Josh, Roger. Uh, <laughs> it's red so we can paint faster. It is red so we can paint faster, for sure. <laughs> so definitely good. But um, so on the on the box for the Diet Troll, it has a wonderful piece of art there. And just gonna a painted example. I'm 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 fine. I'm <laughs> All good. Nothing to see there. I'm opening things. This is why I'm not allowed to open things on camera. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so Gretchen and I were talking about it. Um, I think Gretchen, you're going to go with the green. I think I'm going to go with the look. green, and you can do the scary. Yeah, I'm going to go for the, like the uncanny valley um, kind of, and I'm going to go for the Caucasian flesh with some patches of rot and mold and that kind of thing um, on it. I think it'll be we fun. We have someone saying, "What is that? What is that? That is Kitano. Haha, a dire troll it is. from Nalzor's marvelous miniatures, and it is in this lovely paint kit. And I'm actually opening up all the paints right now that come in the paint kit. And there's a paint brush and a little thing for water. Yeah, it's crazy. Go. Here, here we go. Water all the things. All the things right here. So everything that you need to paint the troll. And I think, too, we've used these kits before. I feel like they always give you an abundance of paint. We have always had leftover paint. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's definitely um, plenty of... of uh, well, there's, there's a great range of colors there as well. Yeah. But you do get two of the park green flat, which is the looks like the, the bulk of the um, the skin color there. So, but very cool. He was asking, where did we get them? Oh, from where you get them? from your friendly <laughs> local game store. Yep, that's true. So yes, um, your friendly local game store should have um, should be able to get hold of these. Uh, any of the WizKids paint night kits. Um, I'm not sure how many they've done, but we've painted. This is the third one, I think. I think so. It yeah. was definitely a zombie ogre. There was we the zombie last ogre. Year. Yeah. Uh, I think it was another one we painted earlier this year. But uh, I think they do uh, one of these a month or every two months. Um, so you can definitely keep an eye out at your local game store, uh, or check on the um, WizKids Facebook page or website. Yep. So uh, someone asked about Roger Moore asked about what um, brand of paint. It is all Vallejo. So, all these lovely paints are Vallejo. Yep. With a Citadel, I believe, paintbrush. Yep. Mm -hmm. No. No, no, not Citadel. Sorry, no. I looked at the wrong one. I looked at the ones I grabbed beforehand. These are actually WizKids. It is Wiz a Kids. Wiz Kids Wiz fine Kids detail. Actually, this is probably the best paintbrush I currently have because I'm mean to paintbrushes. Yep. <laughs> I'm not going to be starting with these because these are both tiny. They're tiny and they're new, so the point is still just, you don't even have to lick it for that first little, I know. First little <laughs> How amazing is that? But uh, yes, I'm not going to start with them. <laughs> I'm going to start with a different um, uh, bully hair color. Tan, the tan. And I must apologize, I mean, I was painting some skeletons today for my uh, soul like grave lords. Army. Fair enough, fair enough. Lots of paint already on my palette. 
I realize I don't have a palette, but that's okay. I'm making do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First time back in the new studio. When I say back, it's not really back. This is the first time in the new studio. So, but yeah, I'm using a, a larger brush, a uh, size two, to put down the base coats. Yep, and I'm using that park green flat. It's a very bright Kelly green. It almost matches my dress, actually. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I didn't realize my, my dress was dire troll green. Dire troll green? Yeah. Now you know. Now, now I do know, and knowing is half the battle. Exactly. I was going to say as well, gingham is a diatrol's favorite pattern. Is it? Yeah. No. I, I could I paint know. his loincloth with gingham. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I could. You should definitely do that. It doesn't have a lot of folds in it, so it actually wouldn't be too, too hard. It could be uh, could be done. Yeah. yeah. Gingham is much easier than normal plaid. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It very definitely is. So that's cool. But uh, how much? It's around twenty dollars. Around twenty dollars? Okay, yeah. So <laughs> I was just saying somebody was asking about how much. Uh, there we go. So Roger Moore was saying uh, they have the zombie ogre kit for about twenty dollars. Uh, where is he looking? Uh, so sorry, going back a little bit further up. Um, Jason asked. Oh, so, oh, said the Manticore and the Beholder were some of the first paint night kits. The Beholder. Um, I think we did the Beholder. Was it the Beholder that we did? I know that we. I don't think we, we did, did it for the paint for the paint night, but we have done the beholder before. I lose track of when and what we do. That's fair. <laughs> I do sometimes as well. There are some things that stand out though. I know we got the beholder when everybody was looking for the beholders, <laughs> so that was good. Um, what have we got? Uh, Roger says uh, we have a lot of these kits at the store I work for. Um, run usually we've got that uh interesting pots for those vallejo paints yep so these ones are just uh they're done specifically for the um paint night kits uh because you can get a, a good sort of spread of uh or a good range of paints um for uh, for that without it uh sort of needing to cost a ridiculous amount so if these were each individual pots like like this You'd be looking at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Somewhere in the vicinity of like $40, $40 I think, yeah. just for the paints alone. And then the mini on top would be another $10, so $50. And not only is it like everything you would need to paint what you see on the, um, on the artwork on the box here. Yep. Gonna... But the range of colors... <laughs> Magic! I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but the range of colors that you see really could be, you know, it's enough to where if you wanted to get more creative with it or go, you know, as Dave's going a different direction with it, it's enough to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and to get kind of creative with it. And even you, you have here enough to even mix up a few different, you know, colors. So. Yeah. Yeah, you put the... Uh Mixing some of the dark sea, dark sea green into the light flesh will give you a really sort of necrotic kind of feel. Um, it's interesting, you're, we've got the, the black green and the park green flat, which are both, well, the park green flat is certainly um, very bright, but then you've got the reflective green uh, at the end. There we go. So the reflective green is more of a, uh, like an olivey green, an olive drab. So I'll you can tone uh, it down a little bit. Yeah. Right now I'm thinking I'm like, wow, this is like incredible Hulk. <laughs> like straight from the comics. Yep. Um even Shrek wasn't this green. That's funny. I'm known to be funny occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, oh, hey John. You're John McAvoy from uh, Mini Masterworks is Oh, hey. Friends. Oh, did I I brought in um the so I think two weeks ago I showed the um, the Vortex paint mixer. Yeah. Maybe two or three weeks oh, ago. Oh right, yeah. Uh, but I brought in the um, so they have make some brush balm cleaner. So like there, balm. And brush balm conditioner. I was talking with John earlier today, and uh, he said that so 
these ones, they, he actually, he and his wife make these. That's really So cool. they mix the, the, they've gone through and he said, so they went through like 65 or 70 different iterations <laughs> to get it, uh, to get everything working just right. And uh, yeah, I was saying with one of, one of my brushes that I had that was sort of caked in old paint and varnish and um, PVA glue. And I thought, I'll give that a go. It gets glue off. Yeah, I, yeah I, I basically, I, I sort of crunched the the, br- the bristles a little bit and then started working it. And like 15 seconds later, the brush was clean. I think my favorite face Amazing. on this is yeah. this face because he looks like he's genuinely happy. All the right, only okay. one, little Look, shoulder one. He's right, smi- one that, it looks like he's smiling. He's kind of looking back. Yeah, yeah. yeah that guy right here. Yeah. He's... It's kind of yeah, frightening. John. He's happy. Yeah. John <laughs> said, "Rocking that shirt, Dave." Oh yeah, big, big cheese. cheese. Choose cheese. I was telling um, telling Johnny earlier that uh, the over the last last year we've been uh, camping a few times in state parks with uh, our quarantine bubble, mm-hmm. and uh, everything's always been always sort of met outside and been sitting like six feet away from everybody else all that sort of stuff um but the last trip that we went on uh everybody had been vaccinated fully vaccinated and that sort of thing so and the weather was pretty terrible so we didn't want to be sitting outside and we went inside and we sat around we had a really good time just just chatting and relaxing and eating cheese that's a good time. And as, as things are, uh, occasionally come up, um, we started talking about uh, I think we should hashtag choose in, cheese. Uh, we should put in a motion for um, on our little spread here to also include cheese. Always have cheese. Yeah. I like I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. Uh, he says, if I recall, some of the paints are extra opaque, so it goes on a little thick. I'm actually really liking the opaqueness of these because it means I don't have to do a whole lot of layers and because we're trying to get this done in a single episode, I like that. <laughs> it's definitely good. Um, but it still feels very thin. It, it doesn't feel super thick. Vallejo, I always really like the texture of. Um, I feel like they have a good thin to thickness ratio uh, yep. with their paints. And then um, I really like, I think... The other one I really like a lot is contrast paints. Um, right. Though sometimes <laughs> I find them a little too thin for what I want to do. <laughs> right. Um. But no, these generally, uh, and all of the Vallejo paints are going to give you a nice sort of smooth coat. And when we're working with so much, there's so much uh, surface area on these, on this guy. You know, I've been working on that giant. Right, uh, and so it's, it's kind of tiny compared to that. Yeah, I'm like, this is a, this is a breeze. This is a nice break. That's that guy's done, by the way. I'm not. I mean, other than the base, which right. I have Just right the base here, go. I was finally able to get it, guys. <laughs> so we're gonna put that to. We're gonna we're gonna snow that up. Thank goodness he is in a snowy environment, and then that'll that'll get shipped out to the guy who won them. Excellent. That was uh, Josh, I think. I think it was. Cool. Excellent. Um, <laughs> oh, you're just, uh, Jason said, uh, eating cheese, how very Wisconsin of you. Cheese can actually be eaten anywhere. And it should. <laughs> it should be. But, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I uh, just quickly, with a t-shirt, I so I made up these, made this design, popped it up on uh, Redbubble so that folks from the quarantine bubble could, uh, could pick up Choose Cheese shirts. And uh, the plan is that all of the the profits that I make from that will go into buying cheese for the next time we go camping. I love that. That's such yep. a good idea. <laughs> so it becomes super cyclical, which will be good. I'll have to buy a shirt. That'd be cool. A fun to your cheese adventure. <laughs> awesome. That would be good. But yeah, it was amazing how easy it was to do. Put a shirt, put a design together and then put it up on. Red bubble. It's basically like five minutes after I'd put it up, I was able to like order it. Order. 
and then know it was on the way. I haven't gone camping yeah. yet this year. I feel like that's something I need to do. We bought a new tent. Yeah. So. Cool. Someone was asking the name of the brush cleaners, Dave. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, hang on a second. So the brush cleaner, um, so it's from Mini Masterworks. So let me, Mini Masterworks, W-E-R-K-S. So they have um, the brush balm cleaner, which is good for cleaning them. And when you need to uh, sort of condition them and let them uh, sort of soak in the conditioner overnight, you have the brush balm conditioner there. But basically each of these works like a, um, there's kind of like a, a glue stick or a, a chapstick, but I would not recommend that you put these on your lips. <laughs> I did try it out to see if I could put it on there. And then as I licked, I'll put oh. the, the brush through, if it would do the conditioning for me and save me a step, <laughs> but um, it doesn't taste very good. It's not, it doesn't taste terrible, but it's, it's not, it's no, it's not cheese. So. <laughs> That's the next. It's no cheese. It's no cheese. I'm gonna say that now. Anytime something is <laughs> just not up to par, just right. absolutely <laughs> no build up. Right? Say, well, it's no cheese, but it's no cheese. Yeah. But then again, what is? Also, hello, Ryan. Thanks for joining. Oh. Hello. Cool. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Darren. And Good hello, Sean. <laughs> Roger says, so Dave has tasted them both already. Such a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, someone was asking, does this kit have any washes? Um, I don't think this particular one does, because previously it said it was a wash on them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this doesn't no, no look like it has any washes. One. But I think taking something like the um, in the black or the dark, the black green, yeah, the dark sea green, um, and yeah, just thinning those down and running them over the um, running it over the park green flat will be the kind of a quick way to to do it. So many arms. How many arms are there? There are five arms. So many. Five. Too many. Too many arms. And only two legs. I feel yeah. like there is... There's a missing there, opportunity. Yeah, there needs to be more <laughs> legs for the amount of heads and arms. You're saying it's top heavy now? Yeah. yeah. You'd be able to take them out from behind the knee so quick. It's kind of... It would be... I was about to say it would be weird to be a, like a troll and have like heads that were looking backwards. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of so, nifty in that they could like see behind you. But also, I feel like these are a lot of joints that could be manipulated. Yeah. I'd, I'd be worried that like who who has control of the body? He which, does not look like he does. Which head? To, <laughs> which head has control? Do they all fight about it? Which could be really easy. You just get them arguing amongst themselves. I feel like that's a classic move. With yeah. anything that has multiple heads. Yeah. That's a, it's like a good classic. I think you're right. <laughs> Ryan, can you have too many arms, though? I I feel like you could. I feel These don't look like, like spider arms that all work together. These, yeah. these look like... I was going to say, based on my reaction to centipedes, yes. <laughs> you keep certainly can. I don't know. How many times did Doc Ock win? Against Spider-Man? Yeah. Enough to make him a, a classic villain. Okay. So maybe it could work. Maybe eight is the number. Eight's the magic number. Yeah. <laughs> did you say one is the loneliest number? Yeah. Yeah. One is the lone. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the three-headed knight. <laughs> no. uh, Yuri says, so many eyes, so many eyebrows to obsess over. There are quite a few eyes in these. You are right. 
That's true. Does each eye get an eyebrow? I don't know. Well, the scary thing is that there are also... What have we got? We've got one, two, three other faces in the torso. Yeah. The toothpaste bill. That's a super This creature he must be super high. <laughs> I feel yeah. like if I do a gingham kind of like uh, pattern on here, I have to do like live, laugh, love somewhere else. <laughs> it's a very like. You can do like a, a blue. Like do a farmhouse kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, like a farmhouse chic. If we're gonna, if that's the vibe for today, I guess. Um, that's what we're gonna do. I don't know. I'm not sure that's gonna work. He has go. a whole, I could, I could do, I could even do Buffalo Pod and he could have a whole HGTV channel just dedicated. <laughs> that's what all the arms are for, renovation. Renovation? Nice. He's gonna show up and he's gonna be like, love it or list it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm I'm loving. I heard you wanted an open floor plan. <laughs> Let me help you with that. This character we're building. I'm loving it. Fantastic. So um. There we go. And of course, the fun part with like so many pieces and so many nooks and crannies, you just got to turn it, keep turning it around, and you'll find more and more, more and more places where, that you've missed. When you think you've just got everything there. So, <laughs> all looking good. Chris says, no, no, he is a chef. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Are you sure? Because a, a a troll like this who loved HGTV sounds like they would also kind of be a little scary. Yeah, that would be a lot scary. But I also noticed something else that we're missing. What's that? Paper towels. Paper towels. Yeah. We, you know what, we came here to... to to paint. paint and be messy. <laughs> be messy? Yeah. That's what we're going to do. So there he is. We don't need paper towels here. Paper and it's towels. It's by magic. <laughs> ha ha! Paper towels. Thank you, Leona. Sorry, guys. You're good. All good. You wonder what was she doing? So there we go. Cool. Okay. So. I'm wondering if I should, I think I should do some shading first. And then I'll come back and do some highlights and then some more shading and highlights and back and forth. Sounds like a plan. My That's pretty much what my plan was going to be. Um, yeah. After I get all this lovely, lovely bright green, just. One of the advantage of having the paints <gasps> on a strip like this is that when you shake one of them, you, you shake, shake all, all of them. them. Josh Potter says he has so many arms. He's the chef at Garistro's Bistro. Okay. <gasps> do you remember? Yeah. I do remember. We even s the Bistro. mini is on the shelf. You know what we should do at some point in time is just write up a little booklet for all of the ridiculous <laughs> <His> characters. characters. <laughs> and there he is. Garistro from, from Garistro's Bistro. Bistro. Fantastic. Bistro's Bistro. Yep. You can put me on that side. That's cool. <laughs> Actually, is this one Garistro? I think mine was Garistro. Yours is Garistro. Yeah, mine's Garistro. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I thought Dave's Devil was Garistro. It's no, not. I don't know what business. I, I, can't, I can't remember what mine Dave's was. Dave's Devil is in, but um, the family yeah. business for sure. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not a, a coffee shop, maybe. Does this have a, a good coffee shop vibe? He does have a bit of a coffee shop vibe, yeah. A little bit. Like I think the um the rage of yeah. having to deal with people before they've had their coffee on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis. Yeah. Just and I think he uses the that um weapon to uh grind the beans. Oh, yeah. No, and what more to sort of smash them flat. You know, I want coffee ground by a double sword. That seems yeah. like I don't know what that would do, but it seems like it'd do something. <laughs> it would do something. <laughs> Yes. I'm not sure what we'll do either. But. Um, is the new studio everything we thought it would be? Um, it's not, I mean, it's it's great. It's it's here. There's no glass anymore. Yep. I'm not in a fish tank. It's, um, it's an odd one. Yeah. Um, so it has so many fam familiar elements. And yet it's unfamiliar. Yes. 
it's uncanny. So, yeah, it's uh, it's just. I don't know that we were that we had an idea really of what it would be like. Yeah, we just were told to show up, and we did. Yep. Yeah. To be <laughs> fair, like full, uh, what's the word? Disclosure. Full disclosure. I didn't really tell Dave and Gretchen. Like, I didn't prep them for anything. <laughs> we, ne- we never know anything, and that's the way I like it. Okay. <laughs> As- also, hello, Wyatt. <laughs> I didn't even know I was auditioning for this job when I interviewed for this job. So I feel like that's that's how I started this, and that's the way I'm going to keep that's doing it. That's how you aim to finish. <laughs> yep. Just never know. I know nothing. <laughs> Chris... Cox says, um, come to Dwayne Dwevel's Coffee Shop. Yeah. Dwayne Dwayne Coffee Devil's Shop. Devil's we'll coffee brew the shop. Out of every <laughs> we will brew that. Fantastic. Out of every cup. A lovely dark roast with a rhubarb. I'm going <laughs> to write these like characters down. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And I am, I, I'm going to add that Doubly to my delicious. games that I want to DM. Excellent. And. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Um, cool. The list of reasons why people will never let me DM a game just keeps expanding. <laughs> awesome. Sean you know how sometimes says, you go into a um, like a, a fairly poorly run coffee shop and there's that smell of, of like burnt yeah. coffee beans? Yeah. I think that that would be potentially... Uh, like, oh, sorry. Um, eternally that smell <laughs> in there. In, you know in Dwayne Devil's coffee shop. I bet shop. their scones are delicious. Oh, they are. Oh, yeah. They're perfect, yes. Like, like d- flavorful, just moist, just a random level of moistness. Oh, yeah. Just and, that nice um, little crumble. Yeah, they're, just, they're perfect. The coffee, however, <laughs> terrible. Uh, terrible. <laughs> Actually, I really do like that. Like, the baked goods are fine, but the coffee is terrible. Not just fine, the baked goods are oh, perfect. No. Dare you say <laughs> sinful? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Maybe not, but uh, yes. <laughs> okay. No, the other, he needs like a little apron. The other one needs a chef hat, and he needs like a little apron. <laughs> we can do that. We can add that in. Okay. Also, for those of you joining in the chat, let us know what you guys are painting. If anything. Scones of stone. Only Specializes for in devil's food. I love it. I'm a chocoholic, so I, I would totally be there. And I drink mud for coffee. Um, so, what? like, you've never heard that phrase where, like, the coffee is just so poorly done. They're like, it's, it's like mud. Yeah. I don't... I don't brew. I brew coffee for strength, not taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Not for flavor. Oh, it, it's it's flavored like coffee. All oh, right. <laughs> I thought it'd be flavored like mud. <laughs> yeah. I'd still drink it if it had caffeine. It's fine. Okay. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've made a mix uh, over here of um, it's a mix of the beastie brown and the black. So um, and I've just thinned that down. And I put it next to the um, see the black's quite thick, but beastie brown there and uh, some water. And I put it next to the um, the tan that I used as the base coat. Uh, so that I can dab in there and mess around with with that shade. But yeah, I've thinned it down so that I can paint it on into some of the crevices. But I can just go in and do this nice and quickly and then come back with the tan afterwards. And that's the thing. But I don't want to do it as a wash over the entire piece. Uh, obviously underneath there, I can do something like that. And then I can come back and start to sort of wet blend those two together to get some good shading there. 
I think over the faces, face there, uh, the wash over there. There's a lot of um, very wiry kind of uh, musculature. Yeah, right it, it kind of it feels like all of these um, very like strained muscles. Um, feels like maybe he's evolving more faces and heads as he goes, like just uh, right. trying to escape. So he might have been born with like two heads and one arm. And it just keeps happening. Right. Just you know, you know, sometimes that just keeps happening. <laughs> sure. Yeah. What was that movie called? The Thing. Just like also, that. hello, Dave. Cool. Hey, Dave. How's it mm -hmm. going? What do we got? Um, oh, oh, that's right. We forgot to ask about what people are working on. But uh, yeah, Leona asked. You know, how I said before that I could hear you. Yeah. yeah it appears that that's not a hundred percent true. <laughs> I thought it was at the time. <laughs> Maybe I was talking at the same time as you were asking it. Or I was thinking about talking at the same time as you were asking it. But, uh, so we've got um, so Roger Moore is working on, uh, well, it's well, such a surprise, China Warriors from Monumental, the last of the base game units. Starting to see the light. Fantastic. Uh, Wyatt Wagner is still working on Massive Darkness. Come on, doesn't skimp out on the minis. They certainly do not. Josh Potter says Guinness gives strength. Coffee, coffee is for dexterity. <laughs> um, Jason said, uh, still painting my magus. And it still taunts me right next to the Hydra. That's looking good. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Sean, uh, oh, sorry, Chris said, uh, I've been working through Mon Park. No paint today, but bought a desk now. Oh, now making dinner. Built a desk and is making dinner. We can forgive you for not painting today. <laughs> uh, Sean did a little more work on his Tau Commander. Um, should, uh, much yard work to do. We'll have some mini picks next week. Very cool. <laughs> Dave Hummel's been working on his tan. Fantastic. Uh, and Chris Cox asks if it's Etten's Eatery. Yeah, that could be good. That could work. Uh, Ryan has been working on terrain lately, building a wizard's tower and making a big tree to go next to it. And then the actual mm. ground and surroundings. Very cool. Are you just doing it like a... going to do a big terrain piece or are you building a board that all these are going on? How are you doing that, Ryan? Cool. Uh... These faces on the chest are crazy. There's too many armpits to have to... Too many armpits. Get around here. Yeah. Too many crevices. Definitely has a pit. A lot of pit issues. That's a lot of deodorant. You were talking about all the toothpaste, toothpaste? this guy needs. Yeah. I, I just as you right. thought that maybe he doesn't clean his teeth. <laughs> uh, maybe just... he doesn't wear deodorant either. Yeah. <laughs> Stinkiest troll ever. And that's saying something. I won't mention kind of what the what color that was my this nickname kind of looks like. In high school. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of fun, um messing with this. I don't usually paint this way. Like Which way. Like I normally I think if I had if I had the time, I would have started with a, a darker base color and worked up. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't have time to do a wash over the entire piece. So just doing it in the premises, it's creating a really ugly stage <laughs> to the miniature, which uh, which happens occasionally. But hopefully, this will be something where we can show people how, how it's, it's okay. And how to recover from the ugly stage. Some might say that having like five heads it's, doesn't matter how you how you paint it, it's still gonna look ugly. <laughs> uh, 
There we go. People are talking about their tans in the chat. Oh, okay. I don't tan. <laughs> I just Or burn. lack thereof. Yeah, I Chris don't have the ability. I turn into a lobster. Yeah, I'm with you, Chris. I don't have the ability to tan. I love going outside, but I have gotten second degree burns from the sunlight twice. So. <laughs> See, that's crazy. I don't like going outside, but I can tan just fine. <laughs> and that's just the way it, the cookie crumbles sometimes. It is, isn't it? <laughs> my it sister is. and my brothers can all tan. I, I just I lack the ability. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, Gretchen, are you just laying down the green? Yep, the I am laying down a flat coat of park green flat. And then I'm going to go back through and probably try out that dark sea green a little bit for some of those deeper shadows. And then um, go in, probably tone it down a little bit um, with either the black green or the park green flat again. Kind of give a nice... Um, Blend, if you will. And then go in with the reflective green for highlights. See what that does. I don't know. I might open it up, see the color, and be like, never mind. <laughs> um, but in my brain, that seems like a plan currently. Okay. Anyone ever have that whenever you, like, in your head, like an outfit or a paint combination or, like, something it just seems like a really cool idea and then you see it in person you're like that's not what was in my brain for paint colors mm. yes for outfits no <laughs> it's <laughs> everybody's seen me eh? <laughs> does this t-shirt go with these jeans dave yes. style icon the answer is always <laughs> yes sure later somebody may point out that perhaps it doesn't or that it was an inappropriate thing to wear to a wedding, but um, yeah. Also, Josh Potter was saying that the Etten's e Eatery is part of a Forgotten Realms version of drive-in <laughs> diners and drive. <laughs> right. That's I'm good. sensing a, a new source book. I'm gonna say I I feel like this is the this is the way the future should go. That'd be good. Okay. So does that look crazy enough? Most definitely. Looks like he's fallen over in something. Yeah, well. He needs to get up and clean himself off. It's difficult when you're a troll. Yeah. Hi, JT. We can see your name now. Woohoo! Hopefully you got that link that I put in the chat. Yep. I can see you, JT. All good. Excellent. Uh, Chris, it looks like one, one of them sneezed. It does kind of look like that. It's disgusting. Cool. Just so you know, this is the May June paint night kit. Oh. Yep. May June? Okay. Yeah. Like you could get it at the end of May into June. Okay. Cool. It's the May June kit. So this is uh, the Diatrol paint night kit. Let me put it up and there we go. Oh, check it out. From uh, WizKids and uh, Vallejo. Paint and supplies inside. Absolutely true. Everything you need. Yep, I would recommend um, getting hold of a larger brush to paint those, yeah, that the base color. Is very tiny. Yeah, but uh, but otherwise, we all good to go. Um, we are giving one of them away. This one. That we are. What should our hashtag be for that? <gasps> hashtag choose cheese. Hashtag choose cheese. Let's be confusing. <laughs> Let's do it. Trish cheese, there you go. 
Should we go with that, or should we go with like hashtag diatrol or hashtag Etten's Eatery? I, you know, I'm I'm liking the choose cheese. Okay. I'm I'm committed now. You said it. My brain was like yes. Fantastic. And uh, now now I think we just need hashtag choose cheese. Does it need to make sense? No. no. You we just have to know you want in. That's. Do you want to be a pot? Do you want to choose cheese? That's. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> or ride a bike around? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, we don't need Disney knocking at our door. Yeah. As, I think if we um, just do like l- less than twenty seconds, we're all good. It could just be parody. Exactly. It's you know okay. Creative Commons or whatever. As Chris says, you choose cheese at Etten's Eatery. Choose cheese at yes. I'd, I'm not sure I'd like to have like the, the blue cheese. <laughs> I'm usually a big fan of blue cheese, but uh, blue cheese at this wonderful uh, Etten's Eatery that we're concocting would be terrible, I'm sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just mixing some of the tan in with that. Um, mix of the beastie brown and uh, black there. So I'm not looking to get a consistent color um, across the model. So, I'm, but I'm just going to um, paint it in back into those highlights. Um, <laughs> Ryan says, "I'll have what she's cheese having." having and nice I'm one. There. <laughs> Acquisitions Incorporated has a source book. Critical Role has them. Now painting have a little mini's own. I think we should. I think we, we yes. should go for it. Just all these fun characters that we've painted. The uh, Garista's Bistro, oh. Devil's Coffee Shop. Be all um, good. He says Garistro's Guide for Gastronomic Gastronomic Gourmands. <laughs> Sean says, try the toe cheese. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, no pun for the Munster cheese? <laughs> I'm sure it's there. Waiting. Just waiting. <laughs> it's lurking. That's one of the boss fights when you have your characters <laughs> go in there. <laughs> Against the Munster it's cheese. It's all normal, and then there's the Munster cheese. <laughs> Fantastic. The Munster gr- grilled cheese is really just a mimic. That would be cool. So I'm kind of um, I'm going all playing back and forth between the um, the mix of the tan with the pasty brown. I'm going to move that slightly this way so you can see it. I'm going to go back and forth. I'm just messing around, sort of back and forth between these and the um, basically like just the straight tan there to um, paint that musculature up. Okay, but if we have Welcome to Culinary Combat and everything is a food sourced um, chef monster, I feel like we need a Gordon Ramsay pun. And like I feel, I feel like we need to. Well, that would be Hell's Kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah, it's Hell's Kitchen. This is totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Hell's Kitchen. Who wants to eat there? Only every discerning demon. Yeah. We would have to do something like that. You can come up for an, a name based on Gordon Ramsay that could apply to one of our chefs. Okay. One of the cool things on the, um, the diatrol, because he's not uh, like nasty and dirty, there's lots of little, uh, you can't quite, maybe quite kind of see it there in the the calf. There's lots of uh, 
sort of bubbling flesh. So. I think he's soon going to have more legs. Yeah, you think it's another one that's going to sprout yeah. out from there? Possibly. But I think uh, once I've done the next highlight layer, I'll come back and uh, put a, like a thinned wash of um, either the, uh, probably the black red from the, um, the set there. Just to give it that sort of uh, the look of open sores. The look of gross. The look of gross, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Rust and shamely. <laughs> Excellent. No. There we go. Yes, hashtag choose cheese. <laughs> Demi Corgan Ramsey. <laughs> Demi Gorgon Ramsey. Nice. It's just Gordon Ramsay in a different hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. I wonder if there's like a a 3D model, like a Gordon like a, 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 an STL file we can buy and get something to 3D print for us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Please, someone has done it. that. I'm sure that there's a mini somewhere of Gordon Ramsay that we can just, yeah. I don't know what, what Demi Gorgon Ramsay's hat would be, but I'm sure. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Cool. Hi, James. Yeah, sorry yeah. it wasn't working on Facebook. Okay. So I think at the moment those legs are looking pretty pretty good. I'll come back and do the highlights later, but I'm gonna start working up the back. You can tell it's the back because the head is facing that direction. <laughs> <laughs> or at least one of them is. So yeah, I'll start working on that uh, that musculature up the back. Mainly because on the the front. It's got a couple of faces there that'll take a little bit of extra time. But almost got this guy's base coat down. Yeah. So many joints. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. I think anybody who does uh, pick up the uh, the paint night kit, you have you're in for hours and hours of entertainment. <laughs> Good thing that's exactly what you want. <laughs> there we go. Quite cool. Yeah, good. It's quite neat. This is actually the uh, second second time I've been on a live stream this week. Wow! Can you believe it or not? Believe it. You yes. on live streams? I know it's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Crazy. Now I got to do a live stream um, with my friend uh, Dan Osborne, who uh, he and I have just finished up painting some nights for uh, the Nova Open Charitable Foundation for their summer raffles. So we got together to have a chat about that, and about painting minis and that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, for most of that, we were just talking. We didn't actually do any <laughs> painting. So it's nice to... Nice to get, get back, down to business. Get back to business, yeah. That would be sure. <laughs> There's a I'm song just, for everything. <laughs> I'm just happy to, to be here after my, my two weeks. That was two whole weeks. Two weeks hiatus. Yeah. That was craziness. That... It's great to have you back. I missed everyone. Cool. Hmm? <laughs> Said I You're missed back. everyone. <laughs> there we go. Now that I'm working up on the back here, I sort of 
kind of decide do I do I keep moving up onto the the heads, or do I work out onto the arms first? Come back and do the heads last. Mm. I feel like it's harder to rush the uh, heads than it would be to at the end of the episode rush the arms. Oh, okay. So you're saying I should do the heads first? Yeah. Right here. I will do that then. Get in there and paint some of these. I feel like the heads are more of the focus. Yep. That's fair. So I'm going to work on this, this head here first. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. So there's so much character in the in those faces. That's a good one. Yep. And thankfully it's... So it's nice and easy to, to bring that out. Shame says, what happened? My cat needed to go to the doctor, a specialist doctor, and I had to get a filling. <laughs> Wait, I thought you meant for your cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, a filling for your cat? Um, they do that? <laughs> they probably do. I'm I don't sure know. Um, do. I know they do braces for dogs. Um, yes, they do. Look at this. Uh, no, unrelated to my cat. Um, <laughs> I had to get a filling. In a totally different mouth. In <laughs> a totally different mouth. Um, yes, my cat needs a, an eye surgery, so I had to bring him to the kitty cat optometrist. And that was the only day they could do it. Cat optometrist. Yep. Do they have letters or do they just have like different pictures of fish? I wasn't allowed to go in because of COVID. So oh. I'm going to pretend it's the fish. The fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Castle was there, was there like, I think it's tuna. I think it's this. I also found out he has cataracts. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> cataracts. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Um, apparently it's, it's not a genetic condition, but it can just happen sometimes when they're, when they're in the womb, the mama cat's body can say no eyeballs for you. And, uh, that'll just happen. Right. Oh, Hi, Gary. Calcifer. So. Okay. 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 Oh, so as well as James, um, we've got uh, Gary. Hello. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Jason <laughs> said I knew a dog with titanium T T3 placements. That's, That's amazing. Great. Amazing. I've seen that movie. <laughs> speaking post of movies, post-apocalyptic movie. Oh yes. Speaking, speaking of, movies, of movies and and speaking of hor 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 horrific. I want movies. you to do the interest for all any movie I'm ever in. Horrific. Horror, <laughs> horror, horror. Um, Had I practiced that, it would have been perfect. The independent horror film that I am in does its Virginia, its local premiere, this weekend on Saturday. Um, so they're t still selling tickets for it. If you go on Facebook and you type in Bloody Summer Camp, it should pop right up. Yep. And all the sales from the tickets goes to help Camp Holiday Trails, which is a camp for special needs children. Um, it's where the film was filmed. Surprise, surprise. Um, and they ha actually had to cancel camp this summer because of COVID. It took um, so much of their revenue mm. away that they had to completely shut down camp. So all of the ticket sales from that premiere go to help um, Camp holiday trails right and the super cool kiddos that are there when we're not filming a movie about murderous slasher person <laughs> nice <laughs> though their artwork is included in the film fun behind the scenes <laughs> fact um <laughs> the art room was left decorated by all of the children and their art is wild <laughs> it is that's cool I have never seen more interesting art. There's like a fish with feet. That was, I mean, 10 times more like, just watch the film for just the background artwork from awesome. these children. That's cool. Yeah. Excellent. Um. <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, yes. So check out on Facebook, Bloody Summer Camp. Uh, I put the link cool. in the chat. Oh, awesome. 
that people can click it yep. and see. And there, click like so that if you aren't in Virginia or aren't able to make it to the uh, Virginia premiere this weekend, <laughs> you'll be uh, able to keep up to date as when you'll be able to see it. Yeah, it will be available on Amazon um, cool. sometime this summer. I don't know the exact date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is why they never make me do interviews. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for those who like, um, 80s horror, it is based off of a bunch of different 80s horror films and the, uh, the reviews said it was like a love song to 80s slasher, um, films. So it also stars Felissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp and Dave Sheridan from, um, Scary Movie. Cool. So, uh, so. did you say Alyssa? Alyssa uh, Rhodes? Felissa. F- Felissa Rhodes? Felissa Rhodes. So, uh, do you think she's been typecast? Um, she... <laughs> Sleepaway camp, bloody summer camp. Oh, okay. it's like an homage. She's paying <laughs> <Right>. respects. <laughs> um, Excellent. But yeah, so if, that, if that's your jam, if old, scary uh, 80s films are your jam, then... Check that out. You'll like it. That's awesome. That and if they're not, really you'll cool. laugh. <laughs> there we go. Come along there. I think the next uh, the next highlight stage is really where it's going to start popping. But that's the basics on all of the the heads, the faces on the heads. Now to do the faces in the torso. <laughs> 80s so is it in 3d uh no um but they actually went they they did the best given their budget they did the very best they possibly could with getting as much 80s accurate things as possible um so that was really fun that was interesting um but yeah it, it premiered, the big premiere was at Carolina Fear Fest, um, which I did not go to because uh, it was far away and I have lots of other job things that I do outside of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good reviews, so. That's cool. That's and very good. And I have the longest death scene in the film. How long is it? I think it's like five minutes. Originally, I, I'm pretty sure they cut it down, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. I get to get chased, and um, different fun behind-the-scenes fact, I was too fast for the film crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they kept... They Sorry, kept Gretchen. We're going to have to ask you to slow down. <laughs> Um, Can you just look like you're stumbling through the woods? <laughs> they they did have me. We tr- actually did the whole cliche trip and fall thing because I was too fast. Right. Um, it was before I broke my foot, and I um, I just you know gotta go fast, gotta gotta yeah. It must be comforting to know that you could then like outrun a serial killer. Uh, well, it was outrunning the film crew, who okay. is like a a man in his 60s I believe so um, it must, must feel really good that you can outrun a 60 year old with a huge cam, camera gear yeah with all that he was a trooper though he was amazing um, shout out to him like shout out to camera guys yeah shout out to camera guys everywhere cause uh, he carried all the stuff uh, there's a lake scene where one of the actresses you know is in the water and the killer shows up and he was in there with like a wetsuit right. just like there. I also body double for several um so I body double for one of the actresses in the film and she has tattoos and I don't. So uh-huh. um that's also a fun fact if you watch <laughs> it try to figure out when I'm body doubling for people <laughs> and when people are body doubling for me cuz when I broke my foot other people had to body double. <laughs> so. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, there's just a lot of really fun, weird behind the scenes things. That's cool. I like that. 
Um, <laughs> need to learn how to run like the bionic woman in slow motion. They used slow motion in the end. <laughs> that was, um, that was how we solved the too fast problem. Would you like to look at some minis? I think, I think that we should. Cool. Yeah. It's that time. It's that time of, of the evening. The evening. Let's check it out. Choose cheese, everybody. Jason said you had to Baywatch run through the woods. I really did. Except instead of getting to, like, run in a swimsuit, I was in, like, a crop top and, like, 80s, uh, like, Runner shorts, shorts yeah, high waisted right. shorts, and I had um, chucks that were not mine. Oh, uh, so <laughs> it's never good wearing somebody else's chucks. Um. Okay, looking at the uh, the minis, the first one we've got up is Brad Taylor's uh, Scythe Airship. Ooh, that looks very cool. I like that color green. Yep, it's that. not quite an olive. Yep, it's like almost it. the reflective green from the yeah. set. Yeah, very cool. But I think um, I'm gonna give a big shout out to Brad for the uh, Hogan painting when there was rivets along the uh, along the, those panels, panel yeah. edges. That's uh, that's crazy. That's a lot of a lot of extra sort of dabbing along there. Looks very nice. I know the the blue on the uh, windows looks great too. Nice work, Brad. Very cool. Oh, Chris. Uh, I just finished the bug Dyn Dynastivus <laughs> from Unpock. That is crazy. I uh, love the eyes for that. Is yeah. there a glaze on the eyes? They look extra shiny. They do look extra shiny. I bet you there's a gloss varnish. What can you tell us, Chris? Chris is still in the chat. But yeah, looking uh, looking awesome there. I think Yeah, the eyes just really just add that extra layer of texture to it, which is super cool. Very nice. Yes, there is a gloss varnish over there. Yeah, looks awesome. Chris, Chris Gorka painted up Scarlet Witch from Marvel Crisis Protocol. That is a wonderful magenta. Yeah, it is, isn't it? One thing you'll be super excited about, Gretchen, although oh. even though we can't quite oh. see it on the um, the photos here, Chris was saying that he has a uh, like a pearlescent mixed into that magenta. Excellent. So all of the the um, smoke and magic bits all have a uh, bit of a pearlescent sheen to them, which is super good cool. Use. Hmm? Good use. Good use of good pearlescents. Use. Yeah, Definitely. good use. Cool. Nice work, Chris. I love the face as well. The face just Those gross, eyes. Sort of super crisp. Glowing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice work. Oh, look at that. I popped these up. This is what I've been. Uh, that is what I worked on over the weekend. So uh, some death rattle skeletons for the Soul Blight Grave Lords army that uh, myself and Jeff Jenkins, who was on the show last week, and our friend Damon Drescher and friend uh, Dave Powell's painting up for Adepticon next year. So these were. Uh, so you have pl plenty of time. Yeah. To get that all done. Yeah. <laughs> So far, I've painted 15 models. How many I, are there? I, in my army, I think I have 50. So I have about 35 left to do. Ooh. So maybe by the end of the month. And then I'll have uh, like a whole like 10 months to learn how to play with them. Gotcha. That'll work out. Yeah. So that I, when we I get there, like we're that'll, not... that'll, that'll, it'll happen. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll be good. But no, very happy with those. How they come along. Garrett. Started work on a Loot Studios Hydra. I think Ooh. this has to be a uh, a three D print. That source point lighting. Yeah. Right that on that belly there. Doesn't it? That... Yeah, it looks awesome. Having the um, yeah, there's like two or two points of lighting. There's a like an overhead blue, and that lovely lava glow from underneath. Putting those two together as always. Always gives you a very dramatic effect. But yeah, looking great there, Garrett. Super cool. Those uh those heads are mean. <laughs> those teeth. 
I'm saying those teeth, the teeth come out, so they like stab you first and hold you in. Like a couple of heads would stab you and hold you in place while the other heads ate you. Oh, that's true. And that's the way to do it. But yeah, looking awesome, Garrett. Garrett. Nice work. Jason was asking how many pieces that was printed. I don't know. Or oh, how many pieces was this painted in? Um, printed. Yeah. Five? For each head? Probably, I would say five at most. Because I see the arm. One, two, right. three, four. Yeah, no, I, th I, I think it was painted with the arms and legs on. Gotcha. It might have been the, like the two, two heads on the lower side and heads and necks on the lower side, and maybe the two heads and necks on the upper sides. Yeah, I'm thinking four. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. But I uh, definitely cool. Gavin has uh, painted up a Dark Angels Breacher Sergeant for thirty k. So it's looking very cool there. Got the um, little wing accessory there, just on the, on the top there. Looking good. But the, uh, yeah, this is a fun one. With the, the Dark Angels in 40K, they are like a, a deep green, mm -hmm. kind of like the black green from uh, the Vallejo there. But uh, in 30K, so 10,000 years earlier, their armor was black. And uh, mm. so black, they have a lot of black, red, bones and um, Gavin's done a great job there with all that, that silver trim. He's also picked out a lot of rivets as well, which is nice. But yeah, looking good. And I think um, you've got that nice sort of solid black armor look and dusting up the legs and a little bit of the bottom of the shield there with that uh, with the um, base colors is uh, a nice way to go. It really ties it in there. Cool. Good stuff. Oh, Jake, uh, Jake English has a work in progress arm of Noble Matriarch of Ecstasy from Creature Caster. Ooh. So that's looking very cool. Um, that's a lovely gold armor there. Looking great. Jake um, showed us some uh, Lunar Wolves, one of 30,000 uh, 30, Lunar Wolves uh, last week that had, they were like a light gray, very pale gray that had um, a purple kind of undertone to them. That's so always a very pretty kind of um, otherworldly combination, I feel. Yeah. yeah. I looked at it and was like, that's really cool. And yesterday I sent him a message and said, hey, how did you do that? He told me and I was like, so I put it onto some wolves, some actual dire wolves that I'm doing for this um, vampire army. But I'll show those uh, probably next week. But uh, but yeah, this is looking really nice. I'm loving the, uh, that sort of non-metallic metal look going there on the the armor I started to put that texture into the cloth as well which is looking good nice work Jake oh JT has been working on the Lord of Vir Virulence <laughs> the Lord of Horrific Virulence there we go Lord of Virulence from uh, Games Workshop from the Death Guard range yeah it's looking very cool lots of uh the disgusting Death Guard colors. Got that rusty metal and that uh, sort of the drab green. And then that scary, scary uh, sort of magenta. I think that magenta is actually on it, like the belly, the exposed belly of the, the model. Just popping out. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, looking good. And I love that uh, the way that you've done the. Um, Sort of the toxic ooze coming out of the ends of that, uh, those pipes on the ground there. JT looks neat. Very nice. And no worries, all good. And just quickly to say, uh, James, we can see you coming through on a Facebook comment. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Michael Durer has uh, got a work in progress. He said it's been a busy week. This is a great. Is it looks like a, it's a lion in armor. There's a lion paladin. <laughs> I don't know. That great axe there. But yeah, this is coming along nicely. I'm liking the silver. Um, and yeah, great teeth there too. 
We can just chomp, we can cut things in half and eat them up afterwards. Nice work, Michael. Looking good. Oh, Roger's Japan Explorers from Monumental. Oh. He's looking very neat. We've got that great uh, sort of samurai top knot. And uh, interesting mix of uh, other bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, I'm loving the, the red and the green, of course. Looking very cool. Initially, I thought that was like a, a bird sort of perched on the shoulder. Oh, is it? It's a. Um, it's like an axe. Like, yeah, it's like a pickaxe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I felt a bit silly as soon as I realized it was a pickaxe, but uh, now looking good. It'd be an interesting kind of weapon, though. Yeah. A bird type thing that becomes a pickaxe. Yeah. Would be good. Be interesting. Be cool. But now looking good, Roger. Looks cool. Nice work. Oh, Roger says he's keeping those in with the uh, the same colors as the warlord. He painted up. Good, nice. Okay. Oh, Ryan's been painting up the great unclean one. Yeah, this is disgusting. <laughs> and he's done something similar to uh, to what JT did and has uh, used that. Um, I love it. It reminds me of a grosser oogie boogie, like just a oogie boogie. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> I have to play the foreign card there. The the from Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. The boogeyman. He's filled with bugs and he's he's like a canvas bag. Okay. But there like this guy is like a much grosser like. Yeah, he's not filled this, with bugs. He's yeah, filled with the intestines. The skin is like. It almost looks like fabric, which makes the concept of it being skin so much more just like. Nah. Yeah. Like that's it. To move like that, it can't be attached yeah. to anything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. It's super frightening. But uh, no, he's looking fantastic, Ryan. Loving that, uh, the leaking ooze down the front. But uh, yeah, that bluish green is a great um, great color to choose there against the, um, the more yellow green of the flesh. But yeah, nice work. Looks great. Oh, Sean has painted up the Sanctum of Amintok. A stone mage in the middle. So this is for his um, Lumineth Realm Lords army. And I think this is a uh, what they call um, an endless spell. So you cast okay. the spell and you set up the spell effects on the uh, on the table. So I'm guessing this one protects the uh, the mage while they're sitting there casting other spells. But yeah, it looks fantastic. I think um, I love that the these again just much like ryan did with the uh the blue green and the yellow green I've done a similar thing here with the the cracks and then the power like the power pieces that are emanating from it um looking good having those two two different greens but yeah nice work very cool there we go oh sorry i'm just going to mention um so the that uh paint that was used on the base of um, Ryan's Great and Unclean one and also JT's Lord of Virulence is called Nurgle's Rot. So it's a, uh, like a glossy technical paint. But yeah, very cool. Nice. Last one is Tim Patterson. Fantastic gear. Yeah, Tim, uh, we had the uh, work in progress that we got to look at last week. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, beautiful work there, Tim. I wasn't sure which color, which direction you're going to go with the colors on the uh, the mushrooms, but that um, vibrant blue is uh, fantastic. I it's like the choice. vibrant the vibrant blue. Yep. I think that has a, a very magical kind of definitely uh, does feel yep. to it. Yep, for sure. It almost looks like the um, the big mushroom on top is going to turn into like a jellyfish. <laughs> it kind of does. Whoa. Yeah, very weightless feel. It does. It does have that. But I love the way that um, the Tim has used, also brought that blue down onto the, the weapon haft in one of those uh, mushrooms there and also onto the base as well. So it's cre created like a, a halo of these bright blue mushrooms around the model, which keeps that focus in around that, uh, 
around that disgusting maw. But yeah, nice work, Tim. Looks great. Very cool. Why oh, it says magical shrooms. Yep. Very cool. Nice work, everybody. Thank you very much for posting those. So that was a was that a mix of the the form and the group, Leona. Mostly the group? Yeah. Okay, cool. But yes, so we have our uh, Facebook group, Penny Happy Little Minis. Uh, if you're a member, don't forget to post what you're working on during the week. Uh, and uh, keep an eye out for any posts from Leona asking to check out your minis for our uh, for the section of the show that we've just done. Um, if you are not a member of the Facebook group yet, feel free to come along and join in. Uh, if you're not into the Facebooks, that's also cool uh, because Leona has just popped a link to the form that we use outside of the uh, Facebook group. So you can submit minis that you're working on, minis that you've finished, minis that you're particularly proud of, things you worked on years ago. That's fine too. We all love, uh, love to watch, uh, to look at cool minis, basically. Exciting stuff. But yeah, very nice. Um, Josh says if anyone else is watching in southern Ohio keep an eye on the sky check your preferred weather station it might get hairy tonight indeed he had said there was a tornado warning oh a tornado warning for southern Ohio ooh that's yeah. not good ooh. here yeah. in uh, Baltimore we had uh, severe storms yes and no doubt flash flooding in a number of areas crazy stuff But yes, stay safe. So Gretchen, what have you, what are you working on now? So I took some of the black green because dark sea green was more of like a dark sea gray in my brain when I looked at it. Um, I'd agree with that. So I did that and I kind of loosely um, painted where I wanted the shadows to fall. And then now I'm going back through with a watered down kind of blend of the black green and the park green flat to clean up where uh, I want the blending to be a little bit more um, gentle, I think is the right word for it. Sure. And then I'll probably go back and build up some highlights with the reflective green and see if that uh, gives me the kind of effect that I want. And if it saves me enough time to uh, go through and get this fabric done, if I can actually finish a mini on time. <gasps> I know it's been a while. I've been working no. on the frost giant. My I'm, I'm skewed in my brain. I <laughs> yep. I don't know how to speed run anymore. To, to, to be fair, you you have finished a lot of minis in one show. So. I have. I yep. have finished a lot of minis in one show. Sometimes for the worse, sometimes for the better. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes it works out, but you know what? I I enjoy I enjoy speed rounding it. I as much as I like taking my time on stuff too. I feel like there's a certain level of like loosening up, like yeah, where you you do things um, a lot just uh, not less, less carefully but um, I was about to say less cautiously yeah less so, yeah. cautiously I think is the way to go yeah. and it, I feel like it has really good um, nice things that happen with that sometimes yeah so definitely okay don't so. hold yourself back as much because you can't because there's a time limit yeah so I'm, uh, I've mixed in some uh, Vallejo Ivory here. So I mix that in with the tan in the game color range. And now I'm painting that on the, uh, the legs. So just highlighting some of those, um, that, some of that musculature um, in the other, other areas. I'm just sort of dabbing it around on the um, areas that have got the, the kind of gross skin condition. And just sort of dabbing it in around there so that I'll get a little bit of um, some highlights sort of poking through when I thin down the, the black red to put over it. Maybe a little bit over 
here as well. So anywhere he's got these um, these sort of strange growths and textures, which is something else that's that's fun to sort of experiment with. It's more likely to sort of be able to try and do that if you're painting it things up quickly. Yeah. Looking good. I'll start working up the uh, belly here. What I'm going to do is leave the area sort of on his chest there that won't get as many highlights because he's sort of standing like that. So as you can see, that would be in, in shadow. But the top of the belly here will get a little bit. There's a little uh, one, one-eyed um, face. <laughs> yep. So uh, there we go. That face is crazy. Crazy. They're all crazy. Crazy. But yes, speaking of crazy, would you like to win one of these? If you would, make sure you pop. Hashtag choose cheese. Don't ask why. Just do it. We're creating a cult is really why. We're seeing all the people who will Are follow we? our instructions. <laughs> no, we probably aren't because there's a lot of work in, in running, say, running a cult. I don't really want to run a cult. I don't know I don't... if I sign on for that. Be in one, sure. <laughs> run it. Mm, I don't know. But yes, open hashtag choose cheese and you will be in the with a chance to win your very own paint night. Absolutely nothing to do with cheese itself. You will not need lo you will not win cheese, disclaimer. Yes. You will win a troll. Yep. <laughs> a troll and a whole bunch of paints. And so Pardon? I can pick the winner live. Oh, oh fantastic. It'll be live. So in less than thirty minutes we will know who has won. The Dire at, Troll! I'll do it at 8.45. Oh. In less than... Oh, what time is it now? 8.20. 8.24. Okay. In in a time period. In 19 <laughs> minutes. In less than... Oh, in just over 20 minutes. I'll get it right we'll eventually. Get it there. Eventually. It might take me 20 minutes to get it right, though. <laughs> okay. Right now I'm going through and just doing that that same mix. Quick highlights here on the um, on the arm. That's it. Okay. What? No cheese? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right out. <laughs> Oh wow, there's a um, little cluster of um, sort of texture on his back. Yeah. That, and I just dabbed a bunch of paint on it and it looks like, uh, maybe not, but certainly from down from here, it looks like a face, it's, like the profile. Yeah. The face, so it's like, that's where the next one's coming from. Well, I think he's just growing them. I think he's having that kind of a day. Right. Well, it's one of those things, you know how, well, I'm not sure exactly, but in a lot of sort of troll mythologies, they have like a regeneration kind of thing oh, yeah. going on. So I'm wondering if this dire troll is kind of regenerating, but because it is a little bit of a coward, hasn't gone into many battles against... Um, adventurers but the regeneration hasn't stopped so it's popping out new arms and heads and that kind of thing it's like his is an overdrive yeah, yeah. his regeneration is like Rah! I wonder if it's something like that and he just needs to find a good adventuring party to sort of trim him back <laughs> Excuse me, kind sir. No, no, no. I don't want to eat. I don't want. No, no. no put this. You know, leave the sword out. It's fine. It's. <laughs> <laughs> if you can just take this head, this head, 
these two ones. Keep this one, though. This is the most handsome head I've grown. <laughs> yep. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I read Josh. <laughs> yep. And he just phones in his fights. He's really a dial troll. Dial troll. Uh, yeah. Nice one. Okay. So that was, well, those looked a little bit extreme. So because I've got the the paints right next to each other, and we're doing this in a fairly sort of fast and loose way, I can come back with a slightly different highlight or tone highlight there. Yeah, there's are there's parts on this where I'm like, oh, that looks really nice, and then there's parts on it where I'm like. Mm. I would need to clean that up. Right. That's fine. That's all good. Mm. What do we got? I kind of just I keep getting distracted. I start working in a section and then it's like and then I just move right across onto a completely different section. I should finish the arms first. It was done. I can spend some time. I don't know how much time I've got to spend on the the faces. <laughs> Whether I'll be able to come back to the arms with the final highlights on the. Uh, That's why I told you to focus on the faces. I know, I know. You're strategic. I know. <laughs> like one of the faces done. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, yeah, I wouldn't ever have painted a troll's skin normal flesh tones, but Dave's troll is turning out extra creepy because of it. Yeah. That was, we talked about that. You're like, no, it'd be yep. weird, horrible, yep. that. Yep. Caucasian flesh, uncanny valley kind of thing. If it's that, that wonderful green, you're like, it's a monster. And this is like, it's a monster, but it used to be not a monster. <laughs> Actually, going to mess around with it. Grab a little bit of the light flesh as well from the paint set. So that's not too far. It's just a little bit of a pinky, pinky version of the ivory. Okay, onto the faces. That's okay. What I'm going to do here is switch out my brush for a smaller brush, size one, and start. So in this main face here. This is the one that I think has got most of the brains. Maybe because it's the largest of the heads. There we go. He's got lots of great um, sort of depth in here. All of the the crinkles and crevices around his mouth. Now they get closer to the, these, these teeth here. I think you're right. They they don't brush. <laughs> Dental hygiene is not uh, not high on their list. Still has all his teeth. But I'm sure they're putrid. This is also the point where you get to go, okay, well, if the teeth are putrid, what color should I paint them? <laughs> no, look, there's parasite brown. Just waiting. Just waiting. Just waiting for it. It'll be good. Or maybe put a, like a thinned uh, wash of the black green. Oh, over yeah. It, or the reflective green. Could be good. I think I've used the reflective green before on uh, Soviet tanks for um, Flames of War. It's a pretty neat uh, military color. One of the other wild things 
is this guy's got a, a bunch of bumps on his head. This particular head. But it turns out that some of them are actually eyes. So I have to make sure I get those painted. That would be good. So, nice. And as I'm moving to the back there, I'm just picking up and mixing in a little bit of the tan to sort of blend it back in. There we go. How's that look? That's looking very good. I think, um, I can't remember the name of the character, but there's a character in the, um, Sin City movie with, uh, that's yellow. Mm, it's all yeah. yellow. Um, but he has a very... Guy. Pardon? Yellow guy? I think it, the character might be called oh. Yellow Guy, but... Uh, Rorik... Junior. The yellow, that yellow bastard. Okay. <laughs> but uh, his this this face looks a lot like that, like his face. Oh, it does. Yeah. He's very creepy. Yeah. This head next to it's got a sort of a thinner. A little bit more sort of, um, I guess, classic Scandinavian um, troll kind of features, like a thinner, thinner face and a more prominent nose there. With the uh, pointy ears, looking pretty. He's gonna look good with. Um, with like dark green hair, I think. Oh, yeah, if I good. get the time. I have a feeling I might not go. We not finish all of the heads. I'm just going to move on to some of the other areas as well, so we can get some folks and see some other other colors being worked on, rather than just lots of the uh, Caucasian flesh here. I'm gonna dry brush on here okay. and see. There we go. See how that does for me. See. See if that yep. has the desired. Dry effect. brush picking up some of the um, the texture. Yeah, and kind of gives some more of a skin kind of texture to it too. I okay. think more of yeah. a little bit naturalized. I don't I don't want him to have smooth, beautiful skin. I want him. He's saying his, uh, his like beauty regimen is not as uh, not as good as it could be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gary says I might just pick this up and give it an undead kind of look, almost like a zombie esque. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I you can get some be really fun. Oh, look at that! Look at that angle there. That is creepy. Ooh. All those heads and arms and. Ew. Just gross. This is definitely something Kurt Russell would burn with fire. But, uh, look up, yo. That's <laughs> whack. <laughs> if these trolls were in a band, it would be called the Talking Heads. Indeed. Well done. I, saw, I think I saw Mark Maxey in there. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I think it'd definitely be uh, definitely be fun to give it a, a zombie kind of finish to it. I've been watching it quite a few uh, reruns of The Walking Dead recently. Getting all prepped for the new season. There we go. I think sometimes 
as I'm going through and doing this, I, it feels like I've done too bright a highlight for that stage. Also, did you say but hi to Mark? I did. Or did I miss that? Okay, yep. cool. I did say it. Now, hopefully his response was, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I said hi to Mark. Oh, good. But yeah, sometimes the um, the highlight might look a little bit too bright, like there. But then I can just get a little bit of the original color, and then run that along the edges a little bit to kind of blend it in. So just working fairly quickly here to get it close to. Close to finished. We'll make it happen. Yeah. It'll be fine. What color should I do the uh, the loincloth? Um, hmm. Or is it a little crazy diatrol diaper? I feel like you need some kind of color to break up the... Like the... The, the browns and everything. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it would all just be browns and tans and... Right. Maybe the a green. Purple? A green? Purple? Purple could be a possibility. I'm just wondering if I should mix some of the like Actually, that's what I might try. Initially I was thinking um doing some of the like the textural bits with a um the black red kind of oh, wash. True. If I do those with the black green I think that'll be an interesting kind of finish there. Mark says, I sent off the conversion for the Chaos Lore to Marcus. He's going to polish it, and then it should be casted up soon. Oh, cool. Excellent. Yeah, Mark's been um, doing some very cool sculpting. Um, he sculpted up a uh, kind of a little egg bot kind of thing. Um, I say egg bot, but it's not really a, a bot. But uh, just a little egg-shaped pseudo chibi kind of thing. Um, that it was a Chaos Lord inspired by a very cool classic piece of uh, Games Workshop art. It looks awesome. But yeah, beautiful work on that, that Mark. Great sculpting. I'm sure it was a lot of fun. And send that off to our uh, mutual friend Marcus in Australia. But uh, to a point there where it doesn't matter which way you turn, you've got a head pointing at you. I'm wondering this, the face down in the, like in the stomach, the, the full face there kind of has a very um, like real life kind of set of proportions <laughs> so yeah I wonder if he's just absorbing people yeah I'm wondering if it's um, it's people actually like the face about red for the loincloth red red yeah. or black shades of blue that could work yeah and I think yeah if I'm going to do the green on the on the skin it'll be a nice balance against the um, against the red but yeah, I think this um, this face might. I wonder if it's a, like a digital scan of the sculptor. How cool would that be? That'd be a nice way to put your put your mark on it. Yep. <laughs> Just sneak yourself in. Hey, that face looks cool. Who is it? It's oh, like it's... those Renaissance pa painters who would paint themselves. Yeah. Like Raphael. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but. They would like paint themselves in murals. Yes. And yep. put them in. They'd be like, "Look, thanks for commissioning me. Also, here I am." <laughs> Just so that in the future people can tell who I what, exactly. tell who painted it. That's cool. I think I um, heard about it, like being done it 
in some paintings, but I didn't realize it was kind of like a thing. But it is pretty cool. Michelangelo was known when painting the uh, the Vatican. Yep. For making the different depictions of God and the apostles look like people that he uh, he liked. Right. And making depictions of people in hell look like people he didn't. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Also, last chance to enter the giveaway. Oh, yes. So the giveaway is we're giving away this diatrol box, diatrol paint night kit from WizKids and Vallejo. D&D &D Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures range. So you can win this. So it has the uh, diatrol in it. It has uh, 12 uh, mini paints like this. It has two paintbrushes. It has a little water cup as well. So you can win all of that just by using the hashtag choose cheese. Cheese not included. Cheese not included. Excellent. <laughs> Just said, oh, I thought you were saying they would paint themselves, not paint themselves. Oh. <laughs> A little bit of body painting. It's a thing in the Renaissance, apparently. Renaissance, there's the funny word. Is Renaissance how it's pronounced here? Renaissance? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so in Australia it's pronounced Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah, that's British. So long, I, I can't remember anymore. So <laughs> Renaissance helps you spell it as opposed to Renaissance, personally. Right. Like when I need to spell the word, I say Renaissance. I didn't hear that last bit, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Ah, uh, right. You think Renaissance is more helpful? Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. There we go. We've got that hair done. And the green icky bits. And then... Get onto the loincloth. Yeah, I think this green hair and then the green patches will really start to take it back towards that monster kind of look. <laughs> Just in case the five heads and the <laughs> 16 arms didn't give it that. So. All good. How's it coming along? Is that dry uh, brushing? Yeah, the dry brushing okay. is picking up a lot of details and nice texture. I like how it turned out on the back a lot and on his chest. Right. So nice good bits. I think I'm still going to go through with the little paintbrush and pull out a little bit more highlights to get that little bit more dimension going. Right. Cool. Um, I think it'll be good. So... Potty painting. Is that next week's topic? That's not minis. Which? Unless we're painting. Potty painting. Yeah. Literal bodies. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use a, I think I'm going to use a mix of the black green and the reflective green for the kind of growths of texture. Okay, I have a winner. All right, who's the winner? Who's winning it? Who's the cheese? The cheese is Ryan M. Micho. Micho. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You are the winner. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. Ryan will uh, this this set this one here 
You'll know that it's this, this one because it will have a little bit of paint in the corner. <laughs> I hope it's this one. Yeah. It, it is. Don't worry. There's not a, like a secret one. There's not a secret. <laughs> Leon, are you implying that there's a secret room where we keep extra minis? I knew it would happen. I just had to get it out of her. There we go. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> cool. There we go. Okay, so I've mixed some of the reflective green here. <laughs> Dave Hummel says it would not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> In the secret mini room. Yep. You just press a button and the wall slides. Like bookcase slides back? Yep. And reveals. Very Batman of us. That would be awesome. Okay, so that's how it's looking at the moment. And I think I'll need to do a little bit of a, a blend in with the tan there. But I do have that camera. You do have what? Um, a camera? I do have a miniature spinner in front of you. All right, cool. So we we'll got to put it up on there yeah. when we're done. Excellent. Okay. You can see in the back here that by doing the highlighting on the uh, the flush underneath it, and then running it over as a like a thin wash, I think it just could just leave it as that. Which would work pretty well. Where are some other areas here? One of the other ways you could do this is kind of like as a um, could be fun to do it in like a purple growth and have like little veins running back through the flesh. Yeah. It would look pretty neat, I think. Okay. So. There we go. And let's see how that looks mixed in with the edges there. So around the edges I'm dabbing a, a mix of the reflective green, the black green, the light flesh, and the tan. I feel like we're going back to that five color challenge. <laughs> mix all the colors together. I need a brown. What do you get? So. Jason just asked, what color did you mix with the tan for the shadow areas? Oh, for uh, the shadow area under under here, that sort of thing. That was a mix of the Beastie Brown, not oh. the Beastie Boys, the Beastie Brown. There we go, and uh, the black. So just to add some extra uh, punch to it, the Beastie Brown's fairly um, like a mid-tone brown, uh, so the black just turned into that shadow that I needed. No sleep. <laughs> uh, Dual wielding paint. precious sword. Yeah, do you see that? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm trying to blend while it's still wet, and this goes so quickly. Uh, it dries very quickly. Yep. Two brush blending is totally a thing. Yeah, Dave licks his paint brushes. I just do a wield. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, I think with that mix, it just blends it in nicely. Uh, 
I get some of the hawk green flat. The, um, so I'm going to paint this on as the highlight for the for the hair. Just going to paint it in the, the top sections here so it's nice and bright. Stands out. Then I can leave that base color down in the on the underside there. There we go. What time have we got? We got eight fifty something. So about eight or nine minutes left to paint the loincloth. Are you ready? <laughs> Begin. What is the cost of this mini? It was what, around twenty dollars? It's around twenty dollars. Yes. Yep. Twenty dollars for the for the diatrol with all of the paints. There's the list oop, oh, where is it? There it is. List of paints there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. All good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just, Dave, I'm just doing my own little comedy routine over here. Okay. <laughs> I'm realizing you can't hear it. It's good. I'm sorry. It's just yes. good <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Don't worry. My uh, my daughter regularly, when she's talking to me, she'll be like very quiet. Yeah. And she'll often like look away and continue talking. And it's like, I've, I've told you before. <laughs> My hearing, hearing is not so good. That's not so good for Daddy. Uh, for, my, for my birthday last week, <laughs> um, she got me a, well, her, the card that she got me said, you're not that old. That's what it said on the front. It just said, you're not that old. I was like, great, thank you. <laughs> I guess not. Okay, the um, the black red was a little bit um, thinner than I was expecting, so I've mixed in a little bit of the heavy red to give a like solid base coat on the the loincloth there. I think what I'd do with this, uh, if I had the time, would be to uh, once I painted all the red, go in and um, put a a wash. There's a dark brown wash. So again, probably mix the um, uh, beastie brown with the black. In the kit, you get a vermilion, which is a super bright red. But I won't be using that today. There we go. So you could use that for highlighting the... Uh, the link cloth or whatever happened to use it for. The uh, heavy red is a very thick paint. I don't know if you can see that on the, the brush there. It's super pigmented. And that black red just helps darken it down a little bit. You can see how smoothly that's going on, one coat. And then painting it up underneath. There we go. I feel like... Then you find areas that you... Areas of the mini you didn't paint before. I feel like the more like I get rushed, the more I default to like... This is this is fine. This is like Picasso. This is far away. <laughs> no one will tell. Yep. As long as I just get in general 
what I want, where I want it. Yeah. It's it's fine, really. It's a little bit easier to do that for uh, wargaming miniatures because they generally spend the most of their time like three or four feet away from you on the table. D and D miniatures or role playing minis are you generally it's just, have those a little bit closer. So I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna be like it's just a very painterly technique is what we're calling it. <laughs> painterly, exactly. Painterly means you can see the brush strokes. It's <laughs> fine. It's all good. Yes. Why it says all of my minis are tabletop minis. <laughs> <laughs> the three foot rule. It's a good one. Very handy. But, okay. Might not get this done. So I'm definitely not getting this done. still put it on the spinner? That's, that's okay. I'll put it on the spinner in, in a second. I'll put it on the spinner in a minute. Give me a few minutes. In a, one minute. One minute? Give me two. Two minutes. Seven. Seven minutes. Seven? That's all I need. Seven? Maybe... <laughs> Maybe eight. Also, people were talking about seeing me on screen. Yeah. Technically, I have a little camera, but literally, you would just like see me looking <laughs> yep. at, at the live switcher, <laughs> which would not be interesting. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. You should definitely join us on screen, Leona. Let's call it an even 20. Even 20? <laughs> as far as minutes? That sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just sing us a song. <laughs> no. <laughs> no singing. No singing. The song of your people, Yona. The song of my people. Okay. Radio. Oh. No. Oh. I'm going to paint this into the tongues. Also, Ooh. hello, Sumki. Thanks for joining. Oh, Sumki made it. Fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Just enough to say that I should sing. I spent my channel points for a song. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now you're in trouble now. You did, didn't you? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, this is very typical for the end of the show, but I can sing the final countdown. Right. It's the final <laughs> countdown. I like how this looks so much better up on camera than actually in real life. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Yeah, Actually, it's, I don't. It's always the opposite, isn't it? I don't dislike. I, I should say I don't dislike it necessarily. I like the fact that with doing fast and loose, like painterly strokes, I feel like I get a better grasp of light source and where I want that to hit. Right. And I feel like it's a lot more dramatic. But I also feel like that's the kind of thing that I would have to build up and build up and build up if I am painting that kind of sloppily. Okay. Um. I also think that it gives me a, a quicker concept of like color and shape and that build up and yeah. that kind of stuff. It gives you the um, the volumes. Yeah. That you're uh, that you're looking for, which is good. I could have been thinking you could reach it, but I'm not sure that's true. Uh, yep, I can't reach it. Meh. Right, not from here. Where yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> We'll get there in a sec. Almost. Almost. Here, Here we go. I know I said I was going to paint the, the teeth really dirty, but... I didn't end up doing that. There we go. Okay. Is yours on the spinner? Yep. I just hit the microphone as well. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, oh. Give me a second. There we go. Oh, where are we going? This way. 
He's doing his best. He is. I think we might finally need to replace the batteries. The batteries, yeah. <laughs> There we go. That's the only part of him that needs to be seen anyway. That's the only part with enough like build up of shading to really yep. like Nice. That's the spin that we need. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I really like about it is that um you didn't go for exactly the same no. green over the whole thing. So yeah, that reflective green, some of the um Pot green still throwing through some of the black green. I can't tell if great. it makes him look like he's kind of like shiny or if it makes him look like he's like calloused where that more matte green is showing through. I think it does give that kind of feel. Like it's more of a leathery kind yeah. of skin, leathery texture. Um, I don't know, like he has fish skin or something. Mm -hmm. Like, especially on the back there. I, I like what it did on the back more than anything else. Sure. I feel like as I was going through, I was like, this works here, but I'm not sure if it works anywhere else. Um, no, I think it's cool. But. Sweaty troll. <laughs> oh, yeah, he looks great. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. It's going to go around as well. Yep. See, your troll looks like he is, like, cursed or diseased to create all of these bits yeah. and bobs. And my troll looks like he is, like, he doesn't have any open wounds that you can see yet. So he looks like a robust. Right. Uh, yep. <laughs> looks like he was born that way. Yeah, he was born that way. And that's yep. okay. Yep. Just fine. But yeah, I think particularly in the like the shoulder area mm -hmm. around here, that sort of has that gnarled, twisted uh, oh, scar yeah. tissue kind of look. And I think I'm just going to accentuate that a little bit more, for sure. But yeah, definitely super cool model. Very scary, but a lot of work to it. Lots of little nibbly, knobbly places. Yep. Um, Leona, Which next next week can we paint a miniature that only has one face? Yeah. <laughs> one face and only two armpits. The normal <laughs> amount of armpits. I'd be okay with three armpits. Three armpits? Three armpits, two arms, three armpits. Let's go with that. All right. See how that can work. No. Okay. That would be horrifying. We'll find it, Dave. We'll find that. Maybe. We'll find it. But yes, <laughs> that would be cool. Before and after trolls as the green overtakes their mutations. <laughs> yeah. So beholders, half the face and no armpits. <laughs> Loving it. Sounds totally like a that. plan. So I'm just going to say congratulations, Ryan, for winning this particular... Snaps. Hi, Ryan. Oh, other side. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> um, congratulations. But uh, you can head to your local, friendly local game store, pick up the Diatrol Paint Night Kit, uh, about $20. Roughly clean. Do minutes. it and then show us how you painted them. Yes. Pop those Share. into the uh, Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. We would love to see. <laughs> Nibbly mm. nobbly, timely wimely. Maybe. Yeah, it, it, depending. Sure, why not? Give your troll a <laughs> to Find out. <laughs> Be all good. Cool. Oh. All okay. right. I think that's it. That's it. We're done. We We're did reaching it. into the show. Into the show. New studio, giveaway done, cheese. Done? Not acquired. Cheese chosen. But, yeah, cheese chosen. Cheese chosen. Cheese chosen. <laughs> cheese chosen. And we'll, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Yep. Thanks very much, everybody.